welcome to Saturday Stories. I'm Claire Pranice, and this morning it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Brianna Mukuderi Uchendu. And she's joining us from Texas in her art studio. Uh, so Saturday Stories was a program that was started in 2018 in person at the Society of Illustrators Museum of Illustration. And we started this program for families uh, to come along, meet illustrators, acclaimed award-winning illustrators of picture books, some are author illustrators too. And, and we illustrate them and they would do a presentation and let you know a little bit about how they do the illustrations for their books and feature one book that um, perhaps was the latest book that they've uh, created as is this book for Brianna. This is actually her debut, which means this is her first picture book. And Brianna has already won a very prestigious award. And I'll tell you about that in just a moment as well. So the Society of Illustrators is in Manhattan and it is at uh, 128 East 63rd Street. We have in-person programming and exhibitions. There are three exhibitions going on at the moment. There's uh, the Illustrator 65, a big show, which is in two big galleries and it showcases the illustration. It's editorial, which means that's um, illustrations you might find in magazines, etc., and also in books. So it's a wonderful illustration show to go take a look at if you're in New York. Also on the second floor, we have our comic and cartooning gallery. And there we have um, all the artwork for Judge Kim. Uh, the, it's the children's uh, kids court. It's a very fun show for television and you can see all the illustrations up there on that floor. And then in our uh, third floor gallery, we have the art of Robert Hunt, which is a very magical show and very worth looking at as well. So along with our in-person events, uh, we have virtual programming and all of these things can be found on the Society of Illustrators website. And Tim, who's here with us this morning behind the scenes, will pop into the uh, chat any emails and information like that, including Brianna's Instagram and her email address so that you can follow along and see more about Brianna on her website too. Um, so when you're joining us for these programs, kids and other participants, it's great for you to have some art materials ready. Uh, so some paper and things that you like to color with. Uh, Brianna suggested even crayons or pastels if you have anything like that. Um, otherwise pencils, uh, whatever you have at home that you can draw with. And we will be, do well, there you see the beautiful pastels that Brianna just uh, gave us a look at. Um, but she will be doing the drawing portion after she's done a little presentation all about herself and read this beautiful book. So I want to talk to you just briefly about this book. Um, this month, February, is Black History Month, and we are honored to have Rihanna uh, join us this month because this is a very special book. It's a, a book that is beautifully illustrated. And Brianna actually does work traditionally, which means she does use, you know, pastels and paints and colored pencils, but this she did um, digitally and it's amazingly done because you would not know it's digital art because it's so soft and evocative of even pastels, um, I would say, or paints. It's got a very uh, beautiful quality that really lends itself to this more difficult subject. So the book um, is about a little boy called Jay and, um, I think what is really appropriate about the book is that it's a good message for everybody, whether you are, are black or brown skinned um, or any white skinned child to read this book, you get an idea of what it's like to be a black or brown child growing up. Because when you're young, you can play outside in groups and have fun and no one's bothering you. But when you grow up a little bit older, suddenly people might be getting um, the idea that groups of particularly young black boys brown boys might be creating trouble, which is not fair. It's just not a fair judgment. And so the book is a very sensitive subject. Um, it's beautifully done, um, illustrated wise, but also wonderfully written by award winner, um, Alicia D. Williams, who's a fabulous writer. She's won many awards, including the Newbery Award. And moving on to awards. So this past year for our original art show, Brianna won the Silver Award um, for Debut Illustrator, which is a fantastic award. We have so many submissions for the original art show. It's our biggest 
Show of the Year at the Society of Illustrators. It runs every year between November and December, or during November and December. And so you can see that show uh, live at the museum. Um, we also have an option for you to see that on video. So if you go to our, our website, you can see that it's um, available on a video for purchase. And um, Brianna, uh, we, we got to meet Brianna at the award ceremony, which was really exciting. So I got to meet her in person. <laughs> came in from Texas. And mm -hmm. um, so Brianna, uh, she's in Texas and she's actually from a family that is Nigerian American. So she's first generation Nigerian American and Nigeria is in Africa, North Africa. And um, she went to Ringling um, College of Art and Design, which is a fantastic art school down in Florida. That's where she graduated from with a major in illustration. And she is uh, not just a picture book illustrator now with this fabulous um, first book, but she's doing more books, which she'll tell you about. Uh, she's also um, a visual artist and she does all kinds of art, which you can see on her websites and things that she's already um, uh, featured there. Um, so without further ado, I would like to just first um, say, do send in your drawings. We'd love to see any drawings that you might get done this morning. Or even if you do them later, because this will be recorded and then uploaded onto our YouTube channel. So you can always continue watching it or share it with other family members or friends who love to draw. So you'll be able to find Brianna um, soon on our YouTube channel. But this morning, do draw along and do send in any of your drawings. Uh, Tim will put my email in the chat. It's claire at societyillustrators.org. And I will share that with Brianna. I know she'll be thrilled to see um, what you create this morning. Uh, also do put in the chat where you're joining us from. We love to see where you're all coming in from. As I mentioned, uh, Brianna is uh, joining us from Texas. So she's actually a little bit earlier than we are on the East Coast. And you may be joining us from other parts of the United States or even from another country, which is very exciting. So uh, this morning, over to you, Brianna. It's a pleasure to have mm -hmm. you. Thanks for joining Thank you. While it's still on my mind, I also wanted to mention Alicia, the author. She also recently gotten the uh, Coretta Scott King honors for oh, the talk for the text. Correct. Yeah. yeah, which is amazing. So yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, she I did. wanted to say Indeed, that. She did. Yeah, she's a fabulous <laughs> author. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you want me to get started on my Yes, do share your, your um, program with us this morning, your presentation. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just wanna make sure. So here is my presentation, Draw What You Know by Brianna McCottery Chendu. So, I mean, well, Claire just gave me an introduction, but here's a further introduction. <laughs> um, I'm 23, well, I just turned 24. I made this last year. I turned 24 earlier this year, so I'm 24. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Like last month, um, yeah. I'm an illustrator, as you know. I like to roller skate, cook, draw, of course, learning new things, meeting new people. And these are some pictures that represent me and my loved ones. And uh, e. my inspiration. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? I said ET was in there, and I'm a big oh, fan. Oh, yeah. I actually I went to the UK recently or mm -hmm. last year, and I went to the wax museum. And so that's me taking a picture uh, with the yeah. wax. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so inspiration. Uh, the most vibrant memories I have are from childhood when creativity was boundless and so were dreams. I'm currently trying to search for that feeling again in my adult life. I believe limitless possibilities shouldn't only be reserved for children. That's why I love working in children's books. I also believe art is something that moves through us. I can only create what I have seen and what I know. Going through college, which I recently graduated from, made it hard for me to stand by this because somewhere along the way, I lost sight of who I was. The talk. I worked hard and focused, not really knowing what I was doing on this book and I made it. And I mean, as you heard, it's gotten awards and it's doing really well. Uh, but I mean, I guess, that's the reason why I named this presentation Draw What You Know, because I think that this success has a lot to do with how authentic 
this book and how it came from the heart and how it came from my actual experiences. Here's some more sketches of like the process for the talk. There's a little time lapse in there of my, you know, digital like process. It's a little messy and it's it's pretty fast, but that's probably like seven hours worth of work condensed yeah. into like three seconds. <laughs> oh, that's quite magical. <laughs> Love yeah, my, my process isn't really linear, so it's hard to replicate things. And this being my first book, it was also really hard to kind of make 30 sub sequential images that are cohesive. And it was really difficult to try and get this very like painterly crazy. And I mean, you'll see it today in my presentation, my process is very like, there's not really much explanation to it. It's if you paint, you know, it's kind of like sculpting. You just put stuff on, take it away until it looks right. And that kind of provides a lot of air, atmosphere, and uh, just space in the piece, in my opinion, because when you look at things in real life, there's so many colors and we don't really recognize how many colors are really registering in our eyes. So as you can see, I kind of just go crazy with the colors in the beginning and start to hone in and get in those middle tones as I go. Wow, you did such a beautiful <laughs> job. Of thank oh, you. That's your brother. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention, yes. <laughs> An inspiration yeah. for Brianna is her young brother, Noah. Yeah. Yes, um, Jay's the main character as you heard and Noah, he just turned 13. So he's like about that age where he's still goofy and young, you know, minded but he's very tall. Like he's taller than me. He's like six, two, I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. yeah. Yeah. So he's not a little, little boy anymore, but he's still little to me. <laughs> yeah. Personality. <laughs> yeah. Some pictures from like the interior. Yes. Cute. Um, the environment was also like where I lived, like this is the street that I lived on. Um, at the time I was making the book um, it, and it's nearby my hometown so a lot of the scenery was very um, very familiar to me and so because I didn't really know what I was doing and I was really nervous starting this project especially with my mm -hmm. first one I decided just to draw what was around me and because they didn't even give me a location like in the manuscript it didn't say where Jay was from it didn't say you know what his family looked like or what his house looked like but I really resonated with the story. So I decided I should just draw, you know, Houston. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Some pictures. This is when he drove down, he was riding the bike down the street. Noah. You can see the resemblance. I mean, not completely, there's more trees in the pictures, but <laughs> you know, yeah. I kind of took the inspiration from that. Some more images. I love your use of light, this gorgeous. Thank you. Also, I wanted to add that um, Jay and his friends skateboard and me and my sisters also skateboard and my friends, we skateboard as well. So that was another coincidence with this text that oh, made nice. it so easy to try to bring yes, the characters to life. Nice that you knew exactly <laughs> all about it. Yeah. <laughs> and some more images from the book. I also wanted to include some of my other stuff. Um, as an artist, I think, especially if you're an aspiring artist, it's hard to know what to do. You know, they always say, follow your heart. But if you're trying to get better at something, sometimes you, you don't realize that you, you misplace what you think is important and you lose sight of what you want to, per, to say, you know? So I think it's always important to stick to what you know. I did yeah. for my thesis uh, in college, I did a book based on my Nigerian heritage uh, because there's not really that much, um, I guess there's not many resources for people to learn about their history. A lot of black Americans, you know, come from Nigeria, whether they know or not. And I think it's, and you know, Nigerian, I'm Nigerian myself and I still don't know a lot about my own culture. So I took, you know, the time to do the research and put my imagery to my culture and that's what the bush is so that's exciting <laughs> i haven't cool. published or anything but i i have the images and i would love to actually publish this one day 
Yes. Is there some illustrations from that? And you, have Which you been to Nigeria yet? Or, you know, yeah, you um, I, my dad used to take me every summer. So I would go a lot as a child. You're super um, connected. Yeah, great. Yeah, but I haven't gone in, in, a, in like six or six years, I think. So yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, stopped it for a while. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. What a beautiful book. I hope you do publish this. <laughs> Thank you. Some more images from that. Some more art for my Instagram. Um, Thank you. <laughs> That's you. it. <laughs> okay. And I also have the book here. Mm -hmm. Should I go ahead and start reading? Yes, please do. Okay. The Talk, Alicia D. Williams, uh, written by Alicia D. Williams and illustrated by me, Brianna Kaudari Chendu. Hi, I'm Jay. These are my friends, Jamal, Ebony, and Bryant. Jamal, Ebony, and Bryant. <laughs> Most Saturdays, we race down our block and back like track stars. See my high tops? They help me run super duper fast. We lose track of who wins the most, but I think I'm the fastest. This is my grandpa. He cheers us on. Uh. When we stop to rest, he tells us stories about Olympic heroes like John Carlos, Wilma Rudolph, and Jesse Owens. See this wall? Here, mom measures my height. She makes one teensy tiny mark. Jeez, not even an inch. I'm never gonna grow. Look at my cheeks. Nana says they're chubby. She squeezes them every chance she gets. I whine and groan that I don't like it, but I really do. Wanna see my wallet? It's got my favorite superhero on it, see? I'm strong like him too. When I grow up, I'm gonna have huge muscles. I saved a whole $5 too. I earned it doing chores. Mom says I'm a good bed maker upper. And when mom takes me to the store, I buy whatever I want. Oh, this is our car. Dad lets, Daddy lets me sit behind the wheel. He says, one day this will be yours. I pretend to drive. Room, I can't wait. I asked mom to measure me at the wall again. And she says, boy, you've grown. And I say, but my feet still don't reach the gas pedal. You like my jacket? It has a wolf on the back, see? The hood is soft too. It blocks the wind from howling in my ears. Ow! This was the illustration, everybody, that was in the uh, original art show. It's beautiful. <laughs> Now look at our wall, two whole inches. I say, no one can call me shrimp anymore. Mom looks sad. She says, they won't see you as a young boy anymore either. I tell her I'll always be her little man. Remember my friends? Bryant says we're best friends for life. Jamal says, yeah, forever, like infinity. Ebony says, we're tighter than the lid on a pickle jar. And we are. We skateboard up the street and back. Then we debate whose flips are the best. There's my storytelling grandpa, watching us laugh and goof around as like usual. But today, instead of telling us a story, grandpa does something strange. He warns us not to crowd in groups of four or more. Grandpa says, I believe y'all could be the next Thurgood Marshall, Elijah McCoy, and Bessie Coleman. But some folks might think you're the next troublemaker. We don't understand, we're only hanging out. But Grandpa says, that don't matter. See my face? Nana says the chub of my cheeks have flattened out, nothing to squeeze. I say, I'm still cute. She says, baby, I wish everybody would always see you as a cutie you are. Nana plants kisses on my forehead. I sigh and moan and act as if I'm too old for that. Shh, I'm not old. 
Guess what? Dad got me a new wallet. He says it's because I'm turning into a responsible young man. It's almost like his, see? It holds money I earned from raking leaves. I'm good at it too. And, becomes, and because mom's wall marking can't keep up with how fast I'm growing, she takes me to the mall for a new hoodie. But before we go in, she lowers her voice and warns, no playing, no loud talking, and don't put your hands in your pocket unless you're in, in an open space. But what did I do wrong? Our new car is black. It's slicker than the old one. As dad arrives, or as dad drives, I picture my toes pushing the gas as we glide down the road. He tells me to listen up. Listen up means pay attention. Son, if you're stopped by the police, keep your hands on the steering wheel or on the dashboard and be very, very calm. Dad doesn't need to worry. I'll be the safest driver ever. Check out my new hoodie. It has dad's college, college's name right on the front, see? My hoodie makes me feel safe. I plug earbuds into my ears, cover my head, nod to the beat, open the door to meet my friends and, son, hold on, wait a second. This is our living room. Here's the sofa and the chairs that Nana, grandpa, mom and dad and I sit on. They say, Jay, it's time we had a talk. These are the arms that hug me close, the family that reassures me that I've done nothing wrong and know I'm not to blame. The eyes that say I'm the beat of their hearts, the joy in their smiles and their brave, beautiful child. This is me and my friends. We wanna hang and run, joke and laugh, race and soar, skate and flip, be chill and wild and just be us. The end. So beautifully written as well. Um, it, it's such a marriage of illustration and words, Brianna, because I'm not sure if everybody in our audience knows that as an illustrator, you're selected by the publisher, by the art director, and you mm -hmm. don't meet the author during the process of creating the illustrations at all. Yeah, you don't. You don't even get any feedback while you're creating the work. And no. You, it is definitely like a, a shot here in the dark the whole time. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, uh, this is incredible. Honestly, you've done the most magical artwork with this story, and it's such an important, powerful story. And it's so gently written as well. I, I think Alicia's a master. And, um, you know, what a challenge for you as a <laughs> illustrator to have. It was. It was. I, I think. It. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying, you you know, we can talk more about, you know, mm -hmm. how you use space and color. But um, yeah, I just really loved seeing it again, because obviously I have, I own the book. Mm -hmm. and I, I read it and looked at the pictures, but seeing it with you reading it, mm -hmm. uh, it's really, yeah, very lovely. Aww. And actually, uh, <laughs> audience, you can go on YouTube and hear Brianna read this again, because she's read it um, for other um emissions like uh little simon right there's a video I yeah believe. um simon has the simon and kids youtube channel yeah. and yes. i have i just did something for a video for that <laughs> yeah so I, I just want to say that you know we really loved having you read that and <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, any more things that you want to share do you have that um video of you creating the illustration or um do you want to um, I actually do. I have videos of all the illustrations. It just depends on which one you want to see. Um, well, you sent me one that was quite amazing. Oh, oh. Remember? Of the little, yeah, the, um, yeah, got it. So maybe the audience can see that because that'll give them a little flavor of what we're going to do in the workshop. Yes. And, um, That's a great idea. Let me pull that up. 
So I'm personally excited because when I have illustrators who have a style completely different from my own, I want to have a little go myself. So I have got um, pastel pencils. You might have crayons. You might just have regular pencils. But if you have anything that you might be able to smudge or be messy with, um, you know, you can even do that with your coloring pencils. Just when you see how... <laughs> Um, Brianna does her artwork. It's very inspiring because it's incredibly moving and loose and playful. It looks like so much fun when she's drawing. So I want you all to have a go. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely how I have always done art, you know, find objects. It could be cardboard, crayons, computer paper, anything. Mm -hmm. And I really love working with pastels and because you can just, the color is so vibrant, you can just put it right down and mix and build. And it's honestly similar to how, like what you're seeing here is kind of what I do, but digitally <laughs> on one layer. Yeah. And then I just merge yes. them. And, yes. So it's, it's, a, it's a process of like finding, mm -hmm. you know. And I think you mentioned earlier that it's sort of like sculpting because I really feel yeah. like about the way you work, putting light and dark and, you know, the, all these tonal values that keep moving and shaping the whole illustration. Um, mm -hmm. I would say very much so, just as my commentary on um, the illustrations in this particular book, is that your use of color evokes the warmth of family, the playfulness of being outside, and also keeping um, a lot of the illustrations are airy. You know, you've got room to breathe around them with the words which are quite sparing. There's not a lot of text. Um, mm -hmm. so the words are really important. And the illustration that Brianna uh, had in our original art show was the one with the really fun, ow. Um, yeah. So you know, the words are, are very playful as well as be well placed within the story because it's obviously a, um, a conversation that's going on between mm -hmm. family members. And so it feels intimate, you know, it's, it's real. Oh, look, here we go. Everybody, listen, this look fun to do. <laughs> you smudge, if you don't have pastel crayons right now, maybe in the future you might get some. Um, maybe it's something that you could ask for for a birthday present. <laughs> and you can play around with this. And as Brianna said, you can draw on cardboard or you can get paper from, you know, construction paper. Mm -hmm. Anything really. And you can see how the figure is silhouetted against that light, bright background. So anyway, so we're going to draw all together. Do you ask any questions. If you have questions, you can pop them in the chat for me. I will share your questions with Brianna while she's drawing for you. Um, so just as uh, somebody did put a question for me in the um, Q&A. You can also put some questions in the Q&A as well as the chat. So Katie asked, um, will the presentation be available later so that um, they can read, the, so everyone can read the slides in more detail? Well, yes, they will be. They'll, the whole, um, there may be some uh, regulations around the book reading because publishers do have publishing rights because we do encourage you to go and get this beautiful book. Um, the book is available wherever books are sold, but we really encourage you to buy books from small book um, sellers, keep the booksellers in business and really uh, support your local bookstores. Um, but this is a beautiful book to have and you know you really get to have a, you pour over the illustrations at your own pace. But uh, we will have it uploaded on our YouTube channel, the Society of Illustrators YouTube channel. And Brianna's presentation will be available there. So you could stop and read it more because she did put a lot of really good information in there. I agree. I'll be re-looking at it myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> I did skim through it quite fast. <laughs> Sorry. Good, good tips, Brianna. You know, sometimes when you have an illustrator who's really freshly out of college, which has only been a few years for you, right? Two years, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. About two years. I mean, it's amazing. Your career is just taking off. Thank <laughs> so you. Uh, but, you know, so she's very close to having um, been in school and learning uh, directly all about how to illustrate um, text. You, you often you get given text, but sometimes you just get a, um, a theme or you might do free drawing or do a project of your own. Um, I really hope you do get your book published uh, about the bush. I think that would be an incredibly <laughs> interesting book to have. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay, with, I'll let you get on with um, getting set up there and we can all 
see, we'll spotlight, um, Tim will spotlight Brianna's hands drawing there. Um, and I'm gonna look at some questions while we're getting set up here. Okay. Um, yeah, since I did a, I think, a, yeah, let me do the same profile. So, I mean, when you're looking at a blank page, it's really daunting. So it's good to just get it all out. Just get the nerves out because none of this is really going to show up at the end. <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> oh, but, we, got, we got some good questions pouring in. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So um, I think you might see uh, the answer to this question, Jan. Uh, so Jan asked, what did you paint over the pastels? Well, you're probably going to showcase that in your demo here but um... yeah I just used a, a bit of this basic acrylic sometimes what I do with my and I um with my paintings and stuff it, it's similar it's like a, something that you often do in painting it's like doing a wash and mm -hmm. that kind of brings things together it kind of puts a uniform haze over things and especially uh, if you yes. made a lot of mistakes it gives mm -hmm. you a second chance at trying to do those those things oh. and I just did this with this because I think it reflects off the toned paper really well so mm -hmm. when you're holding it in person it has a bit of a, a sheen to it but yeah, like a because, gold, gold light yeah very yeah good. but because this is oil pastel it doesn't like the water separates onto the yeah, on the paper. It a bit. yeah. yeah it resists it so it's not as apparent if you wanted to have more of an apparent I would use like chalk like an apparent yes. where the paint sticks on it more I would use chalk pastel or like color pencil or something right great and then Carla thank you for asking this question it's a great question um could you speak to your decision about putting the picture of the mother and Jay on the cover um, I think we most often think of a father having the talk with his son. So that's mm -hmm. a very interesting question. Thank you for that question, Carl. Yeah, that's actually a really great question. Um, just the background into the world of like illustrators. Um, I had an art director on this. And so because, especially because this is my first project, I couldn't really, I didn't have the most um, like creative yeah. freedom. I mean, I had creative freedom, but like at the end of the day, it was it was going to be passed by an art director. So if there's for some reason for it could be marketing or it could be, you oh, know, that's true. Brianna. There's it's a lot of the, reasons. Yeah, the cover, right? The cover can be very uh, collaborative with the cover. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if I show you my. Um, sorry, if I show you this again. You'll see some other options for the cover oh, that I had yeah. gone through. Yeah. Um, let me yeah. open it again. Um, yeah, it's my, pretty I, that, you know, marketing, they may like to think of the book sitting on a bookshelf in a bookstore or in a window of a bookstore, or also how will it look as a thumbnail um, mm -hmm. when it's put on a computer. So all of those things are, you know, yeah. they can take consideration. You can see here there is different thumbnails. Like oh, there's yeah. some with he's looking at a door. There's some with like the silhouette of grandpa and his father. And all of these I thought like I and on a personal note I preferred these over what was picked. But mm -hmm. be, for some reason it was picked. It was probably for like he said for it being recognizable and um, I don't know for marketing reasons. And when you're an artist, if you're working on a project, you have to be able to collaborate. So. I didn't mm -hmm. worry too much about it. I I I just did the cover as they requested, and I, I think it turned out great. But I do agree with you. I think you know if it was the father and son, it would be it would have been a more like of a motif moment looking mm -hmm. at the cover. Yeah. But I think people just really love the sweetness between the mother and the son. Yes, um, that's that's true. Yeah, it's it's um it's a gentle opening to the whole beginning of the book as well because it yeah. starts with really him as a younger child. Um, and often, you know, in families, there might be a single family um, situation, exactly. you know. Yeah. Like By the way, could you um, stop sharing the screen? <laughs> oh, because we're bad. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. No problem. That. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Are you able to see everything? Okay. Yeah, so I'm just scribbling right now. That's apparent. 
I just like to work my way in. It's a constant battle between light and dark. But I really like drawing, you know, characters and figures with some melanin because mm -hmm. it's a lot more colors. It's a lot more mm -hmm. difficult. So that's the hard right. part, but there's a lot more colors involved. And so it's right. it's definitely like really fun. And you could do the same with any skin tone, but I think it's just like with darker skin tones, it requires depending on the type of light temperature, depending mm -hmm. on the type of temperature of that person's skin. Um, so it's, but this is just the sketch. We can make Jay green for all we want in this because this is just, yeah, I, I like to, I really, really like your color palette in the book. I think it's um, perfect. <laughs> it's just so good. Thank you. Uh, I like uh, um, purples and oranges. I'm just doing some little doodles just to give some dimension. So like when you look at people, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, this is my, this might sound a little woo woo, but I, my philosophy is like, you are what you draw and who you are speaks a lot to like how you behave and what you pay attention to say you're mm -hmm. a really detail-oriented person you yes. might find it easier to draw things with heavy detail and you might find the process of working on something for several hours very minute details to be very relaxing and mm -hmm. you feel in the zone or you may, might be someone who has a really short attention span you might be a little attention deficit and you might need to jump around more in order to keep interest so that it doesn't feel like a chore. And like, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are like, I don't draw or I can't draw. And it's like, there's a lot of these personal battles that kind of you have come up against when you're trying to draw. And if you just like, let go of those, you can draw. It's, you just have to find out how you draw. And I'm definitely someone who, where people are really important to me. Um, I think everything is really important and people have a lot of depth to them, a lot of things underneath the surface. And so, my approach to art is very similar. I kind of, uh, I kind of uh, build up that way. When you look at a piece, even though the colors that used to be there are not there anymore, you feel like they. You can still see them because they're underneath and yes. there. It still makes up part of the piece, yeah. and I think that's what I like about it. It totally makes it really rich. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, you see here, Brianna is also introducing light with the white and smudging that in. So that will, you know, if you get too too much darkness, you can always add and layer on and vice versa, yeah. so, you know, so. Uh, yeah, and this is the part that feels very sculptural. You see how yeah. Brianna's using her fingers to sort of mold the shape of the head. Yeah, I actually don't have my oil pastels and I'm re really wishing I had some because that's oh. so dark. I'm sort it's, of it's, I'm doing an opposite sort of um, little okay. sketch myself. I've got my dog who's very light furred. He's got a very blonde coat, and then mm. I've got a dark background. So I'm sort of doing the opposite of you. Yeah, um, that works too. I like that. I like the the contrast. It makes it hit. Yeah. So just thought, oh, I'll do a contrast. Um, so also, Brianna um, made a comment about um, drawing what you know and. That is something that is really going to introduce you to enjoying drawing. If you try to draw something too challenging, it might just make you give up too quickly. Whereas if you keep drawing things that you find easier to draw, that will start building your confidence. Um, say, for example, you love drawing flowers, just draw lots and lots of different kinds of flowers, but try different materials. And that's where you might also find um, a medium, an art material that you really um, resonate with, that you really love. Um, uh, so what else would you um, perhaps advise? Because having been in art school, did you get to try lots of different techniques? Did you draw, um, um, you drew and paint, uh, and you did painting? Uh, yeah. Obviously there was a lot of, uh, technique as well I would imagine you did life drawing so you learned a little bit about how to draw because you're very good at drawing people um uh, thank you I, it's a it was a lot of figure drawing in school it was it was like boot camp yeah every day <laughs> um, yeah. three hours or more and yes. uh, there was a few semesters where we they kind of wanted to give you a lot of tools at the school I went to I went to Ringling College of Art and Design so they kind of try to set you up in a lot of different ways and you can 
you know, yourself choose what you want to like, I guess, focus right. on. Yeah. But they initially, they show you a lot of things. You work with gouache, you work with Prisma colors and oil yeah. rubs and yeah. oil paint. And, and uh, you know, there's one, there's one, um, sorry, getting a call. Let me just hang up. Sometimes happens. <laughs> we are live. Still, you're still oh. with me, right? I'm still with, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we use a lot of different mediums, and it was fun to try and, and do that. We even learned new things like about professionalism that we didn't mm -hmm. know about. We learned about different artists in the past and the, the mediums they used and techniques, and it was, yeah. it was nice. I, I liked getting to do all that, but a lot of the people in my school really like digital art, and digital art, art is kind of like the way of the future, so I, you know, in a way, people like a lot of the people at my school really liked digital art and wanted to use digital art during figure drawing class when really we're supposed to use like ch charcoal and um, traditional materials and they wanted to use digital art when we were trying to learn color for painting mm -hmm. and that caused a lot of issues because you know you don't want to limit yourself it's good to know what you like but especially if you're trying to learn something you have to stay open-minded because you never know what you can learn you, an yeah. empty yeah. A, a full cup can't get any more knowledge you only an empty cup can can um receive more water so yeah yeah you have to be willing to be a student so yes that, that's why i feel like we're very lucky to have this um saturday stories program because the illustrators that join us have different techniques so um mm -hmm. one of our participants join very frequently a shout out to Toma and Dana, who <laughs> totally join quite frequently. I know you do. And so <laughs> you get a chance to try different things um, or even, you know, just observe. It's so exciting to see you drawing live like this. I mean, I've never seen anyone draw like this. So it's very oh, really? fresh for me to, to watch as, as, it must, as it must be for everybody else. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, really really um inspiring and very engaging i just feel like oh gosh i want to do this and i would <laughs> never have thought about doing this you know it's like i mean everyone has their own style so you know brianna's got her unique style here you might get these materials and do something in your own style so that's something that i feel is also something to be uh, true to yourself you know don't worry you can obviously um use reference and sometimes copying another artist's work is a great learning tool. But yeah. out, of, out of that will come your own sort of style. So say you draw your person a little differently. It might be a smaller drawing or a larger drawing, just different shapes. Your color mm -hmm. palette will be different because of what you gravitate towards with colors. All of yeah. these things make illustration so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you. Yeah, you guys should draw what exactly you want. <laughs> don't. You don't have to draw this. Yes. Oh, so we do have some questions about the tools that you're using, which we have already uh, mentioned that it's oil um, pastel, correct? Or is it oil? Yes, oil pastel. pastels. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a brand that you particularly like? Because you've probably tried different types. I I don't use oil pastels that much. I mostly use dry, okay. like chalk pastels and with uh, like new pastels on yes. pastel paper. But I did use oil pastels a lot in the past, and I'm using Paul Rubens right now. Paul Rubens, okay. and they're very juicy. You can just uh, see them glistening. Yeah, they're, just, <laughs> they're very filled yes, with oil. I, I do think you know we all, as illustrators, gravitate towards um, certain materials that create the look that we're excited about, and also maybe an ease of use. Um, yeah. With with colored pencils, there are many out on the market. Um, one brand that is often a good brand to start with is Prismacolor, for example. Yeah, yeah. So now that you've heard that uh, Brianna uses the Paul Rubens, uh, that might be a brand to just check out because we can see how rich the colors are as well. It's and very fun. It's 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 very nice, and you can do it on top of paintings. You can do it on on different. Um, different like uh, surfaces, like so smooth surfaces. Yeah, You can do it on rough surfaces. So I just, I love the flexibility with it. Some mediums are more unforgiving, like watercolor, for example, mm -hmm. you can't do this because 
yeah. you, the minute you put a dark color down, that's gonna bleed through yes. <laughs> like yeah. forever. <laughs> so <Very true. laughs> yeah. have you done some watercolor as well? Yeah, we did watercolor in school and it yeah. wasn't like my forte because I like watercolor, but I mostly use gouache because it's more opaque than watercolor for the reasons mm -hmm. that I, I use this. It's yeah. just, it's more attuned to the way that my brain works, but I've used watercolor before. I, I, um, I, I enjoy it. I think it's, it's nice doing washes and stuff. Yes. Yes. I like to mix mediums, honestly. Yes, mixed mediums, yes. So yeah. that's, that's a term, everybody, for our younger participants. Um, that means, you know, just putting all kinds of materials down, paint, pencil, crayon, you can just mix it all up. And even collage, some, some collage artists use cut out paper, but they also paint on top of it or draw on top of it. So that's mixed media as well. Um, yeah, exactly. Also with your, with your digital work, with the, obviously the, this book was done digitally. Um, yeah. Did you, I think what I'm seeing is you drew everything digitally. Am I not correct in that? Did you also draw things out when you were doing your thumbnails and your character development sketches? Were those done just in a, a with a pad and pencil or did you go straight in with the digital just to develop that? Um, I went straight digital. That's what um, I think, yeah, because yeah, I, I and that was a habit from school. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't do digital until I actually like a few years before I went to college. It's okay. been it's not like the easiest. I usually used it. I mainly did it because it's fast. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. um, like the getting it up front is not cheap, but actually like you don't have to buy paints. Once you right. have the program, all you have to do is just buy, you know, True. brushes, True. I guess, yeah. if you want. But it's it's very ease of use. And I was, there's been a lot going on, like, pers personally, it's been a very turbulent time. So I haven't been able to, like, like, as you know, my studio that I'm at now is is not, it's it's new. It's not really yeah. set up yet. And it's, I've, I've been in between yeah. for a few years now. It's been difficult. So, yeah, so yeah. for me... But I didn't want my career to wait and they were already happy with my digital art that I decided let me just yeah. keep doing digital. So um, yes you you worked on this really during the pandemic part part of the pandemic you would be developing this right so did you yeah. um, tell us a little bit about how you were discovered by the um, publisher. Okay so um, well I wasn't expecting it. Like, I'm as surprised as anybody else about the course that my career has taken. But I like, I think I, you know, it gives me hope in the world when I tell the story though. But anyways, the way it <laughs> happened is I was in school. Um, I was, it was 2020 and I didn't know, well, you know, because the pandemic was happening, a lot of my ethic for everything just like everybody else kind of depleted and I didn't see the point a lot of stuff that I thought was important like schoolwork uh was not anymore I just was focusing on like self-love care and yes. in that time I even tried to stay away from the internet because if you remember there were a lot of riots going on during that summer and protests because of the injustices happening to black people in this country and yeah. it was a heavy time and I didn't want to I was very exhausted. So I just stayed away from everything really. But yeah. there was a colleague of mine. I, I, I don't even know who this person was, but they put my art onto this Twitter page called Support Black Artists because one of the initiatives for this, you know, that people were talking about was like, you know, black people don't only go through hardships when it comes to police brutality, but in a lot of aspects in America and especially black artists don't, get enough exposure, no one really knows about them. They don't, a lot of them, you know, depending on other fac facets of, of this society, yeah. don't even really pursue art, you know? Yeah, they can't but, really yeah, yeah they're discouraged from the beginning, yeah, true. I myself didn't even know how to get into picture books. It wasn't even originally, I was I was thinking of going into like pre-production work for movies. I didn't know that I could I could be doing this, but someone put me on that Twitter page and my agent, Jessica from Jill Grinberg Literary Management, she saw my art and I and she saw these two pieces I made. Um, you saw them in, on my inspiration page in my slide. It's a picture of this tree, this big tree. Um, and I made that during sophomore year because I was feeling homesick and I was 
I wanted to take myself back to childhood and that was the childhood tree that I played with, with my siblings. So I put that in my portfolio. I didn't touch it for a few years. And then someone put me on a Twitter page two years later and then she sees that piece and she's like, wow, you should really do picture books. Have you thought of that? And I'm like, oh, that's so great. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? It was crazy. And, and was you know, the, 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 the magical root of that is the illustration was something that uh, was from your childhood. Which exactly. Is, you know, <laughs> picture books. <laughs> I know, <laughs> of, isn't it? <laughs> about childhood. That's fantastic. Uh, it's, wow. it's crazy how that happened. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that story with us. That, that's a wonderful way to be discovered. And um, I have a question um, from one of the attendees. How large is this piece that you're drawing? Uh, I guess we can't tell for the scale it's, because it's close up. Yeah, it's quite small. It's about eight. It's probably the size of a printer paper. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Just this big. Mm hmm Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> Thank you. It's an eight and a half by 11, I think. Okay, perfect. Well, it's already looking really amazing. I, I sort of like, we have to work on mine a little bit more. I, I, I sort of feel like I want to have the same materials as you've got. I've got material got envy like, right now. Recently, they're on Amazon for like, I think, $30 for this whole big pack with all these colors. Oh, wow. So, yeah, how many are in that pack? Like I think, 30? Yeah, I believe so. 30 or maybe 50. Could be 50. Wow. It's a okay, lot. That's good. <laughs> so the glare. I hope you're all fun drawing. Um, so do, do, as I said, don't feel shy to send it in. Um, we love to see this illustrations and uh, for the program. We have sponsors who bring this program to our audience for free, and we're very grateful. Um, the sponsor is actually mentioned and written up on our website. Um, and you can find many programs. Um, Brianna will probably be coming again to do programs at the Society, whether she comes in person or does other virtual or with a new book. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about what other projects you've got going on, actually? That would be very interesting to know sure. what's next. <laughs> it's a busy, yeah. been a busy few months. Um, this year, actually, or last year, I signed yeah. on for like three, or I was simultaneously juggling three projects to so three wow. separate books. And I'm, I'm currently working on like delivering like sketches and stuff for, for two of those. So I, one of them is called uh, Soul Step by uh -huh. Jacob Rhodes. Mm -hmm. And that one's about, you know, African-American soul stepping. It's a dance form that was like popularized in like, I think it's like, if you have a, if you know, if it's so anyone you know went to AKA, like a, a historically black college or, or joined like a black sorority, they probably would know what stepping is. And so that's kind of to give information and give light to that which I didn't even know much about I don't, I don't know you, yeah I was gonna say you've had to do some research now have you gone on have they sent you on location no surprisingly <laughs> not and there's this other I'm I feel like I should have but like another thing that's shocking to me is like it's surprising how much like how free reigns this project is compared to the talk um, with the talk I had the art director getting back to me and I was getting back to her but with this I'm kind of I was I've been on my own a lot they kind of said okay we like the energy so just make sure that the, the figures look because there's a lot of dancing so they're like can you make the figures have a lot of energy and so that's kind of the only frame of reference I have for that uh, yeah but there's a double-edged sword to it so one time it's nice to have some direction but then on the other time other side it's really nice to have that freedom where you're not constantly sort of having to send things in and tweak things you, you're just like going with it flowing and flowing and just mm -hmm. um evolving it which with dance there's so much movement you know it's not going to be tight drawing which is not really your style anyway but no yeah so is there I, is there a uh, a new color palette coming out of that? Tell us a new. Sorry, say that works. 
Well, I, I feel like you've got a certain color palette that sort of evokes. I could see. Oh this, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, can you hear me? Or am, am I cutting? You were cutting oh, out a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> Your color palette on soul stepping, soul step. Oh yeah, that okay. one uh, definitely different. I'm trying to broaden my horizons a little bit. <laughs> but it's still pretty much the same. There's going to be a lot of orange, so, a lot of purple. Uh, and <laughs> a lot of orange. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I can see it being good for that. Um, we are getting close to the end of our program. We've got five more minutes. So, anybody else got any questions? Uh, please pop that into the chat now. And we've had guests joining us from as far as Montreal, Canada. Oh, wow. Really so, uh, awesome. I know we've got lo local, uh, sorry, local well, illustrator, uh, budding illustrators and illustration fans who are local to um, the Society of Illustrators Museum because they are very familiar with the Society of Illustrators. But then, you know, we always have new guests coming in from other places that they don't have a Museum of Illustration in their city. Uh, so mm -hmm. we are so happy to bring this program to you virtually so that you can join us from the comfort of your own home. Um, so we've got another question. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, thanks, Jan. What do you draw when you create um, art just for fun for yourself when it's not work? Or what are you doing for free illustration? Do you have time for that? <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe sometimes, I do. sometimes I do, um, but not often. I, I, I don't feel... I, I'm so busy and my wrist sometimes hurts from all this work, but I, I like yes. I mentioned my bush project, that was definitely something yes. I like drawing stuff that's tribal, about ancestors. I like, you know, sequential narrative. I like comic books too. I would love to publish a comic ah, book. Yes, at oh, some so many point. things to do. Yes, you, yeah, graphic <laughs> novels, yeah. Yeah, and you know, on my free time, sometimes I create stuff like this. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but um, this is like a piece yeah. oh, around here. Yeah. It's yeah. In wood. It's wood. On wood. This yeah. is not the best angle, but. <laughs> and that's painted. Is that acrylic? On a wood panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, let's see. I'm working on a few things right now. Here. You mentioned collage. I did some of this. Or wait. Oh, yeah. This the other day. Or oh, you just ago. did that the other day. <laughs> or sorry, not the other day, a few months ago. I don't know why I said that's, the other day. That's fabulous. <laughs> and this, um, it's like, a, this actually is like, it's like gouache. So it has more of a watercolor feel. I'm working on this one right now. This is, I don't even know what this is right now, but it'll be oh. something when it's done. <laughs> that's in space by the looks of it. Um, so actually going back to your presentation, you use your own um, reference, which I think is really fun. You know, you've taken pictures of Noah, for example, and your neighborhood for the talk. So for, yeah, I was thinking about the soul step. So if there's not soul step dancing going on near you in Houston, or is there, is there somewhere where you could go and take some pictures? Have you done that? Or have you had any models that come and sort of do some posing for you? Or are you predominantly just using free drawing just because you know how to draw? <laughs> I, I mainly free draw for sure. Like yeah. um, with the talk, it was a lot of free drawing, but I took the pictures mm -hmm. when I realized, oh my gosh, like this looks like this. This looks like, uh, I didn't realize I was just drawing my surroundings. So it's harder with step with the soul stepping because I don't have those surroundings. But right. I did watch a lot of YouTube videos and I've been walking, like every time I am about to sit down and work on that, I, um, I look at some videos and I, I try to immerse myself in Yes, yeah, so you're in absorbing it. it, absorbing it into your mind and then you translate it. Yeah. You're not really looking at it while you're drawing. You've just watched something to get the feel of the movement and you're so good exactly. at drawing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I think also like, I don't know if this, this, I don't, uh, this might be a we little weird, but I believe that like, we're all connected. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this might be a little weird to say, but like we're all, part like we're if, if you know how plants in a forest are connected yes, um, yes. humans I think are connected and yes we are I totally, totally agree with you yeah and so <laughs> a lot of what I pull is from I think the collective consciousness consciousness <laughs> that's what <Yeah>. I think <laughs> oh that's so wonderful oh 
for sharing that. Yeah, I think a lot of people will agree with you. And I, th I think a lot of artists connect as well um, from whatever background they have. It's like with anything with the art form, whether it's dance, music, or, or drawing, painting, the, mm -hmm. sculpting, you know, that the, that sort of like relationship that's crossing all boundaries of culture, race, wherever we are in the world, we have that connection and I, and I love that. And I love we can bring this to everybody um, frequently on, on our virtual program. And then we also do, just for those of you who might be able to join us in person, we are starting um, since last September uh, uh, on a Saturday once, um, not necessarily every month, but look out on our website. There's an, a live um, workshop coming March 4th with Isabel Rojas. She's local to New York, so she could join us in person. And so that would be a wonderful experience if you can join us for that. Um, but one day, uh, Brianna, for a future, when you're visiting New York, we can combine you coming in and doing a live workshop. That would be okay. very exciting as well. Yeah. That might not be too been... far in the future. <laughs> that might be soon. Yeah, <laughs> this has been so magical watching you draw. And I'm not the only one expressing that from my own point of view. I, We've got uh, participants mentioning this in the um, in, in the chat. Uh, very oh, inspired. Thank you so much for showing us. We appreciate being connected with you. Oh, that's thank so nice. Thank you, Jan. Um, okay. Don't forget to send in something. I will now briefly show you my Milo drawing, which I <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. See, I just drew oh, so doggy! <laughs> I just had a go. I like <laughs> that sketching. Just for like fun, that. but I am definitely inspired to get the those oil pastels and do something on some construction paper and really go wild. Yeah. So, wow. oh, it's, it's so beautiful! Oh my gosh, that is amazing! That is a work of art right there. Boom! Done. It's not really done, but this is the done one. So, <laughs> you, oh, can right. see. you you would do a wash over it. Maybe you'd start working with a bit of paint, right? So yeah, and then I'd keep going. We're out of time over it, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so gorgeous. Oh, what a great idea to do commissions. Um, I, I love this as a, as a portrait of different people to do it this style. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Thank you. I think I might, yeah, I think I might be commissioning you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send you a, a message. So <laughs> we have come to the end of our virtual morning here. We've um, now decided to do one hour um, instead of one and a half hours because we want everyone to be able to get outside and enjoy being out doing things and we can get a lot done in an hour. And of course, you can all revisit this wonderful workshop with Brianna on our YouTube channel and just watch it again, get out your materials. If you've got some new materials, have a go with those and um, just don't uh, forget to send things in. I know I keep saying that, but we really do get excited when we see people's illustrations. Um, from what they've learned in the workshop. It's very fun. So thank you everybody for joining us this morning. I wish you a very thank happy you. first of February. Brianna, um, best of luck and thank oh, you. We are so thrilled to have you and what a wonderful career ahead for you. And can't wait for your new books to come out as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. <laughs> yeah, take care. Have a great rest of your weekend. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>